If you are in the AI space, you're probably wondering what the hell is QSTAR. This is probably the first time when an AI research got so many discussions with so little information. And this was so popular because a few days before Sam was fired, a few researchers sent aboard a letter warning of powerful AI discovery that they said could threat humanity. And Mira told employees on Wednesday that this AI breakthrough, which they called QSTAR, precipitated board's action of firing Sam Altman. And there are tons of different speculation about what this QSTAR is. At this point, no one really knows. All of them are just speculation. But one of the most exciting versions I heard is that OpenAI developed an AlphaGo type of reinforced learning framework that can be used to significantly improve the logic and reasoning of large language model. Regardless of whether this is true or not, this is a super exciting concept because this is potential path for AI to achieve superhuman level intelligence. And to better understand it, I want to get back to the basics about reinforced learning. What it is, how did it achieve superhuman level intelligence in certain tasks before, and how can this be potentially adopted for large language model? So reinforced learning is a type of machine learning framework that allows AI to learn from its own trials and errors via reinforced rewards. To some extent, it's like teaching your dog a certain trick. You will give a certain rewards or penalty along the way so that it can learn what to do. It normally has a few key components. It will have an agent who can interact with the environment. And this environment can be anything from a video game or a simulation like a mouse in a maze try to find a way out, as well as games like chess and go. And the agent is able to take actions in this environment. In video game scenario, it will be move from point A to point B. And chess and go will be place and move on the board. And after agent take an action, the agent will be a new state, which can be a new chess board after agent made a move. And on the other hand, there can also be rewards or penalty signal back to the agent. So the agent can know whether the action I take is contributing to the goal or not. And the agent will repeat this process for multiple times. And really the goal of a reinforced learning system is to develop a strategy to decide which action I should take in a given state that can maximize the total amount of future rewards that I can possibly get. And that decision making engine is what we call policy network. So it is a pretty confusing term policy, but what it really is, it is basically a function where it can tell you based on the state that the agent is at now, which is S, how likely the agent is going to take a certain action. And one of the most tricky part of reinforced learning is a reward. Because in many scenarios, the agent won't get any immediate reward or feedback after taking an action. In chess or Go example, you will only know whether you win after the game is finished. And this is where the second part value network comes in. It is another AI that helps you evaluate what is the total amount of future rewards if the agent takes a certain action. So at high level, this policy network who is proposing the action that the agent can take at a given situation and this value action that can estimate the value of all those proposed actions. And they kind of reinforce each other. So at the beginning, the agent has a pretty poorly defined policy and all the action they take can be quite random. After each game, the value network can improve its estimation based on the actual results. And the, and the policy network can use that to improve its decision-making quality. So this is high level what a reinforced learning system. If you want to learn more, I would recommend to go watch Steve Burton's video. He has lots of deep dive into the reinforced learning space. But once the system is done, it is extremely powerful because it is able to just self-play and try thousands or even millions of different variations to complete the goal. From which process, the agent is able to discover new methods or new strategy that no one has ever found before. And the best way to look at it is some past projects from DeepMind, which is an institution that developed AlphaGo. So this is back 2012, when DeepMind first they showcased a few examples of how AI is exceeding human-level performance in certain tasks. So I'm gonna show you a few videos of the agent system, the AI. So let's start off with breakout. So here you control the baton ball and you're trying to break through this rainbow colored wall. The agent system has to learn everything for itself, just from the raw pixels. It doesn't know what it's controlling. It doesn't even know what the object of the game is. Now at the beginning after 100 games, um, you can see the agent is not very good. It's missing the ball most of the time, but it's starting to get the hang of the idea that the bat should go towards the ball. Now after 300 games, it's about as good as any human can play this and pretty much gets the ball back every time. We thought, well, that's pretty cool, but we left the system playing for another 200 games. And it did this amazing thing. It found the optimal strategy was to dig a tunnel around the side and put the ball around the back of the wall. The researchers working on this, amazing AI developers, 
but they're not so good at breakout. And they didn't know about that strategy, so they learned something from their own system, which is uh, you know, pretty funny and quite instructive, I think, about uh, the potential for general AI. So through reinforced learning, agent not only get to a point where it can play the game well, but also develop a strategy that is not very obvious for many people because it is able to explore a wide range of different paths that has never been taken before. And a few years after, they introduced AlphaGo, which is a great example where it showcased AI can explore a strategy that were never explored before. Can you sort of share a bit of what is going on in AlphaGo? So uh, AlphaGo has these three main components. There's the policy network, which was trained on high-level games to imitate those players. And then we have a second component, we call this the value net. And it can evaluate the board position and say, what is the probability of winning in this particular position? And then third component is the tree search, where it would look through different variations of the game and try to figure out what will happen in the future take a position like this, first the policy network would scan the position and come up with what would be the interesting spots to play. And it builds up a tree of variations and it then employs this value net that tells it how promising is the outcome of this particular variation. So AlphaGo tries to maximize its probability of winning but it doesn't care at all about the margin by which it wins. Okay, so when you see a slow-looking move, that's maybe an indication that AlphaGo thinks it has a good chance to win. Yeah, that, that is a little giveaway. <laughs> yeah. A little tell, we're looking for oh, yeah. a tell. And with this system set up, AlphaGo not only are able to make quality bets on every single move, but also able to discover and create new strategy that were never discovered before. And here were a few examples where AlphaGo initially made a move that no one really understood. It looks bad, but turned out to be a critical move for a super long-term strategy. The more I see this move, I feel something changed. Maybe for human we think it's bad, but for AlphaGo, why not? Go is like geopolitics, like something small that happens here can have a ripple effect, you know, hours down, down the road in a different part of the board. The game kind of turned on its axis at that moment. This move is very special because with this move, all the stone play before is worked together. It's connect. It looks like a network link everywhere. It's very special. Very special. This effect where AI can explore all sorts of moves and discover new strategy that were never discovered before is super exciting. But what does this really mean for large language model and GPT? One hypothesis is from Jim Fan, who is a senior AI scientist from NVIDIA. So the way AlphaGo works is they use policy network, which if you remember, it is actual decision-making AI to propose what are probable moves. So they use policy network to narrow down a list of high quality moves so that the AI can narrow down and play out a few steps ahead and understanding the ripple down effects of winning and losing for all those high quality options. And as a result, return back an estimated value for each options to understand which one is the best move to significantly improve the results and whether that can be the same architecture for this Q-star. So policy network is basically a GPT that is really good at posing what are the good potential paths to solve a given problem. And then it can use methodologies like tree of thoughts, which is one of the prompting methods that has shown significantly better performance compared with all the other prompting methods. Basically, ask large language model to propose a number of different ways of how a problem can be solved, as well as number of steps for high quality candidates. And so far, this method hasn't been really widely adopted. And one of the reasons is that it costs a lot more money and it's a lot slower. But it's possible that OpenAI figure out a more efficient way for large language model to search for the optimal path. And in the end, there could be another GPT play the role of value network, which can review the thoughts of large language model and provide feedback and critic of how large language models reasoning and logic should be improved here. And this is from a research paper published by OpenAI called Let's Verify Step by Step, where Ilya is also the author. They explore implementing the reward model, where they basically ask large language model one to solve a math problem with chain of thoughts methods, where it will display every single step about how he thinks the problem can be solved, and then get a large language model to review and critique each reasoning step. 
which is quite different methods of how reinforced learning is currently adopted today for large language model. So far, the common method is called reinforced learning from human feedback. It basically asks large language model to generate a few different answers for a given task and let a human to compare and choose which one is better, which is more outcome-based versus less verified step-by-step -step, where they get another large language model to review the actual thinking process of the original large language model that leads to the final results and give feedback to a specific steps that might went wrong. And this type of reward model seems to lead to a much better results which kind of makes sense as a large language model can get a faster and more detailed feedback. So the key hypothesis is whether OpenAI figured out a way to mimic similar architecture to significantly improve GPT's reasoning and logic power and enable it to explore strategy and problem solving methods that it is not solved yet. But again, those are all just hypotheses and guess. There's no real concrete answer about what a Q star really is, but it's definitely useful to get a better understanding about this reinforced learning model because that really draw a different picture about how the future can look like with AI. It might sound stunning, but it's actually not that hard to getting started. This open source project from Patrick, where you can spin up a reinforced learning AI to learn how to play a snake game, where at the beginning it has no idea about what the rules of game is. And after a few hundreds rounds of learning and testing, it can achieve the same level of a pro human player. And the whole project takes less than 400 lines of code. So I definitely recommend you go and try out. I put a link in the description below. So this is today's video. I'm really curious to hear what QSTAR actually is after some open AI announcement. Comment below if you have any other information. I will continue posting interesting AI projects and learnings I got. So please consider giving me a subscribe if you enjoy this content. Thank you and I'll see you next time.